Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are learning about ice dams, what they are and what they mean for your roofing assembly. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. And today, as usual on Q&A Mondays, all the questions we discuss are located in the description below. You can jump ahead using those quick links. And we're covering ice dams. Now this is something that can have an effect on your roof that can damage your roof, cause a lot of issues with icicles hanging over your eaves. And we're gonna talk about what an ice dam is, how to prevent it, uh, during an installation of a roof or beforehand, and maybe how to get rid of one or a recurring ice dam issue if you have that problem with your roof. Today, I have Dave Stubbs from Sheffield Metals with me. Thanks for being here, Dave. Can you explain what an ice dam is in relation to a roofing system? Sure, an ice dam is, is where the water no longer can drain off the roof. And there's a lot of different situations where that can occur. Uh, I would say, 80% of the time, um, it's in a gutter situation where the gutter has frozen up. And then during um, cycles of freeze thaw, um, the thawed water runs into the ice and it just keeps building up. Freeze thaw, freeze thaw, freeze thaw. It keeps building up. And that could be in the gutter or the downspout could be iced up and then it won't allow the gutter to clog. And then the gutter gets iced up and then it runs onto the roof. It can really cause a heck of a lot of damage to the downspout, to the gutter, to the eave, and even, you know, lift the roof up. That could be, you know, some catastrophic damage to a, a really, you know, expensive cost, especially at the eave of the roof. And so basically, uh, as gravity pulls that thawing water down, it gets stopped at that dam that's literally being created at the eave of the roof, at the lower section of the roof, and causing those problems. Absolutely. And, um, you know, a lot of times uh, it's near a valley area where, you know, two slopes are running down the valley, and that massive amount of water. It just gets, you know, it, whether it's too congested or, like I said, the downspout's clogged up or, um, you know, even even without gutter, if it starts freezing up on the eave, which, you know, there's no real warm air that's coming up from the interior of the building. You always have escaping warm air uh, melting the snow off your roof um, in the open open roof areas. But then as that runs down, it gets to that cool area. That, that eave portion, that portion that's not heated. And that can, you know, freeze up pretty quickly, especially where I live, Colorado, where you're at, Ohio. We have those warm days and the sun might pop out and, um, uh, you know, that's where we get that, that thaw. And then it freezes. I mean, and it, and it freezes hard. And then it just cycles and cycles and builds up and, and creates your, your ice dam. So what damage could an ice dam actually cause to a metal roofing system? Depending how, obviously, depending on how extreme it is. Um, it can cause massive amounts of ice in your gutter, which can pop your gutter. It could actually cause your gutter to fall. Water is very heavy. We all know water is very heavy, and ice just sits there and builds up. If it drops your gutters, it's going to tear up your fascia. And it can do that alone. Freeze. If there's no gutters and there's ice on the fascia, that's no good. It's going to deteriorate your fascia, whether it's wood, any of the cementous products, hardy board, anything like that. It can peel the paint off. Um, it could take down the fascia back up into the system. If you don't have soffit, because it can happen. If it ice dams and causes a problem, it can run into the building and find a way in. It's not conclusive that ice damming happens on the, damage only happens on the outside. You know, dripping on your drywall and your insulation, and now you have, you know, black mold, if you say, you know, it's, I mean, all those things have and could, you know, could and have happened before. So what are some ways that, um, you know, an assembly might exacerbate the issue um, what, what are some ways that maybe ventilation or, um, you know, improper installation would cause ice damming um, to be, you know, a, a huge problem for somebody? Well, I think, you know, design has a lot to do with it, Dad, um, because the steeper the roof, the, the better the, the snow, ice, water uh, is all going to run off. 
So design is always a criteria. Um, if we think of the, the Alps, they have the steep slope A-frame buildings. Those are perfect for those conditions. Sometimes we kind of get caught up in the design of, oh, I think I want a low slope roof. And a low slope roof may not be the best design for your house or your building. So I think we you know, kind of get up with what's, what's possible and what's, what's the right solution. So the overhang is definitely the critical area. Um, but I think uh, design is, is key. I was doing a job up in uh, up in the mountains, Colorado, and they had two valleys going into one small area of gutter. That, that's just a problem waiting to happen. Um, up with with massive problems because the two valleys running into you know just creating it, it's already creating a water dam is all that water's going down into um you could oversize your gutters if that's that's a you know something that you desire or you definitely want gutter in that area um oversizing the gutter you know so many residentials use five inch gutter which is pretty standard in a residential so six might be a better a better choice there's some fascia gutter six inch gutters uh from our friends over at new tech and they they run a heck of a lot of seven inch gutter in colorado that that could help out the situation a little bit more flow a little bit more exit room uh, a little more more flow of the water there's also some some interesting products that have come out recent years uh utilizing radiant heat stuff uh, in the old days, we just called it heat tape. And it was, it was a, a piece of wire that you could run and it would heat up a certain area. Now they've incorporated into some extruded aluminum casting things where you run the heat tape underneath your panel system or at the eave. And that can eliminate some of the damming right at the eave. Now, just above that, I'm not sure you know, what can happen, but right at the eave, it's going to melt it and get it into the gutter and make it flow. So that's, that's something. And there's a bunch of products. Invent is one product. Um, and it's the utilization of heat tape. And a lot of people run heat tape in their gutters, in their downspout to help out with the, you know, the, the freeze thought and try to keep things moving. Um, heat tape is, can really help out heat tape, heat trace. Yeah, that's good to know. And I, I think another thing um, that really contributes to ice damming is not having proper ventilation for your roofing system. If warm air is getting trapped in the attic space or right underneath the roofing assembly and heating up the roof too much, too often, you know, that's going to create those problems as well. Absolutely. If you get, you know, different temperature occurrences in, in different areas, for sure. And that could be uh, ventilation that could be insulatory things. We just have to be careful with ventilation because there's a couple different things that can happen. I had somebody call me uh, in Southern Colorado that uh, thought that they had an ice damming issue. Well, the ice dam was in the soffit. So what they had there was a ventilation condition where um, the moisture wasn't allowed to get out of the house. Condensation when the panels got cold and it ran down the panels and into the soffit. So, you know, sometimes it's not just one solution. Maybe it's radiant heat tape. Maybe it's oversized gutter. A combination of two things might be a better solution overall than just one technique. And it sounds like those last couple things that you mentioned is something you could do retroactively. You know, you don't need a whole roofing assembly to apply some of those um, solutions. You could just maybe need new gutters or adding that radiant heat assembly, something like that. Sure. New gutters um, could improve the situation i can't see them hindering the situation the thing about the the radiant heat or the heat taper heat trace it requires electricity so that could be preventative so like you said maybe that the initial part of it is the gutter maybe it is larger downspouts a lot of times that gutter backs up because the downspout is too small uh, we're working on a project in in uh, louisiana and um, one of the you know, one of the uh, designers decided that they wanted to open up the valleys to an extreme amount because they, they get so much rain in Louisiana, massive amounts of rain. And the question I asked was, well, if your valleys are so big, did you make the gutters bigger because you said there's so much rain? They said, no, I didn't think of that. I said, well, you know, one thing leads to another. If you, if, you know, if you, if you need bigger gutter, probably should do bigger downspout. Everybody thinks downspouts are 
are a little bit unsightly. So a bigger downspout might be more unsightly, but they're designed for purpose, not necessarily designed for aesthetics. And that's that that balance between design and, and engineering. Does it matter with roof type uh, with ice damming? Does that make a difference if someone has asphalt shingles or a metal roof or, or some other roofing system? Do you know of anything like that? There, there's a lot of theories about um, how cold metal is and how warm asphalt is. Look, if you've got a warm asphalt roof, that's great in the winter. But if you've got a warm asphalt roof, that's bad in the summer. So, you know, whatever, you know, tends to work in the winter doesn't necessarily work in the summer. Look, metal roofs are meant to have water run off the roof. And when you put gutter on them, it's, and, and it, the ice dam is, is because of the gutter or the gutters backing up, don't blame the roof. Sometimes metal roofing gets kind of a black eye because you see a lot of water or uh, ice damming in metal roofs, but I think it's, it's just more uh, associated with metal roofing because it's, it's so prevalent. And to me, it's more of a design criteria. On, let's say, asphalt shingle roofs, um, there's been some damage where the shingles get lifted up. And then you've got another problem created with the shingles coming up, whether they go back down when it heats up or they, they have you know memory in the asphalt and they stay that way. So that could be another problem. You know, we've got metal as its existing problem. And shingles, as they lift up individually, that can create serious damage as well. What about snow guards with a metal roof? If your metal roofing system has, you know, snow fence or snow rail or something like that, how does that impact ice damming? Well, look, it depends on the amount of snow. Um, it can create its own problems um, if we're running snow bar in into a valley. You know, on the other side of the valley, that can dam up that valley, which isn't the best scenario. Um, it creates different problems. Although lower towards the eave, it's a really nice place to weave this, the heat trace. Um, you can take it from your eave or from the gutter and take it to the snowbar and in a diagonal fashion and weave it back and forth it can be somewhat of a resolve for that location of, uh, for the ice um i wouldn't say that that snow guards or so fence are necessarily something that causes ice dam they relieve the amount of snow at the eave and it allows it to hold it up off the eave section and hopefully melt as it goes the only caveat to that is where it is holding the snow if it if if there's re repeated snow fence or repeated snow bar, you could create another problem structurally with holding that much ice and snow. They do work for safety reasons. Um, they don't necessarily work every time. So if you know I'm a homeowner and I'm seeing excessive ice damming on my roof, um, I'm listening to some of these solutions, should I just go out and, and buy some of this stuff or should I talk to a contractor? You know, what should I do? I would consider calling a contractor, calling someone that you trust, have them give you a couple options. Maybe it's one of those things where you can do an inexpensive fix. Maybe it's just a larger piece of gutter in that area. Uh, that, that's, you know, might be the cheapest option rather than that and running heat tape, you know, new gutter, new downspout, heat tape. Oh, well, we don't have electricity near there. We'll have to run an electrical box which could cause, you know, cost a lot of money to get an electrical box to that location and time and effort. You, know, you got to get an electrician inside your house, all those things, you know, the meter starts running. So I think, you know, as always with solutions, I think you want to start on the less expensive side, talk to the contractor because every situation is a little unique in, in my perspective. Um, there, there might be just some something prohibiting the water from getting out of the gutter or getting into the gutter. Call a contractor, let him get up on the ladder and check out what's going on, and and look for options. Um, you know, there's no size fits all in this in this scenario. Yeah, that's good advice, Dave. I really appreciate the info. 
um, about ice damming, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, comment down below, and if you wanna get your roof looked at by a contractor, we encourage you to do that and get some solutions for your roofing system. As always, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, we'll catch you next time.